Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another out and about video for you guys today. Right now I'm on the streets of Hollywood yet again, but I'm gonna be going on over to a very special uh, movie premiere tonight over at the uh, TCL uh, Chinese Theater for Adam Rifkin's new film called Director's Cut. This is a film uh, that he made year, a couple years ago, but now it's you know finally got distribution and it's coming you know coming out and everything. His last movie that he made was called. Uh, you know, the last movie star with Burt Reynolds and things like that. But I'm out here in Hollywood messing around. And of course, one of the places when I'm in Hollywood I like to go is Amoeba Records. Since I have some time to kill uh, before the premiere and stuff, I'm going to be heading on in there and seeing if I can find anything cool. Well, inside of Amoeba Records right now, just looking around at the awesomeness. And you know how you guys go into different stores and they have like candles that have like Jesus on it and God on it and stuff like that? Over here, this is something new that I have, I've never seen that they carry here like candles you know with like you know different uh, you know singer songwriters Leatherface and different things like that like different artists and things like Aaliyah and everything like the little candles of Aaliyah Betty White has the candles along with some of the other Golden Girls and everything like how kind of cool is that this is something I haven't seen before of course the dude you know from the big Lebowski right over there this is this is actually kind of cool this is totally something new but you know me I have to head on upstairs to where all the DVDs and Blu-rays are to see if they have anything rare cool out of print you know all that crazy stuff that I always say and speaking of Adam Rifkin the guy that I'm gonna be seeing tonight for his new movie this is his last movie that I saw out here in Hollywood at the Egyptian theater the last movie star starring Burt Reynolds and stuff which you guys can get out in stores uh, right now of course it has Chevy Chase in there and I gotta say it's probably one of his his best movies that uh, he he made of recent times like this one and of course Detroit Rock City are my like two favorite ones of his at the moment all right guys now I'm over here at Amoeba where they have like the uh, their outer print case and everything of things that you know fell out of print like the Nightbreed uh, director's limited edition uh, from Shout Factory of course the Friday the 13th tin set that I have at home already along with the Fright Night and the blob from the tw um, from Twilight Time man the, these things are going for crazy ass prices and things but look at this guys I haven't seen this before this is an action figure of of, uh, Quentin Tarantino as Mr. Brown in Reservoir Dogs. That's a $30 toy, but I have never seen one of those before. That is actually really kind of unique and different. I like it. Well, just got out of Amoeba. I didn't pick up anything, like I said, because I don't want to have to hold stuff while I'm going to a premiere and things. Saw some cool stuff in there, like in that lock case. And that, you know, Mr. Brown toy, uh, the Quentin Tarantino toy, looked kind of cool, the action figure. Let me know down below. Have you guys ever seen that in, out in the wild before? But the good thing is about Hollywood, if you walk down the streets, there's just like, you know, food platters and stuff everywhere. So if you guys are hungry, they're on every street corner now out here in Hollywood. Why? I have no idea. But like that one's all like, you know, roast beef and stuff. I ain't gotta mess with that one. Alright, I'm still on Hollywood Boulevard right now. And we have a homemade ice cream truck right here. Where it's all decked out and all different decor and things. So let's go over there and take a look at it. So what's going on over here guys? Is this you, is it? Is it is this you guys' this truck right here? Oh yes, sir. Take a look around. Go ahead, take a look around. We got uh, we got major ice cream all to You got all treats for a dollar? Oh, all that treats for a dollar. We got ice cream for a dollar or more. We got Cheetos. Dude, you even have this. You even have this thing decked out in like Rugrats related kind of stuff. Well, it kind of it kind of looks like a Rugrat kind of from like that old school TV show. Am, am I am I out of it or something now? No, no, no. You Oh, I'm tripping. Okay, just keep in mind. I'm a little bit old. I'm old now. I'm old. Well, you, you guys got uh, what do you guys got for a dollar on here? We got bags and chips for a dollar. Okay, okay. So so you guys have like a website or anything or like a thing where people can find you? You guys check out this card. Yeah. Instagram, Snapchat, we got Twitter. Facebook. Just go ahead and check this out. Yeah, I'm so old, I didn't even know what those characters were. It looked like it was like a Rugrat or something like, you know, like one of the Rugrats from the old Nickelodeon show on there. But I forgot the character of it, but then I guess it's part of a different show. I'm sure a lot of you guys will correct me. Maybe Adventure Time or something. I don't, I never really watched that show, but. But right now, I'm on the streets of Hollywood over here by the TCL Chinese Theater. Oh yeah, it's about to go down. All right, everyone, finally made it on in to the Chinese theater right now. We got my uh, pass right here to see Director's Cut, Adam Rifkin's uh, new film right now. Uh, all links 
to the info and stuff will be down below in the description box of this video if you guys want to you know see it or pre-order it on Amazon and stuff like that make sure you guys check it out some of the stars Adams Adams here in the house and we even have Ron Jeremy and Lynn Shay in the house right over here taking pictures because they're two of the stars uh, of the film all right everyone I finally made it on over here to the Chinese theater I'm with the main man I'm here so, how you doing I'm doing very well thank you yeah you're actually the star and you're the guy that came up with the, the idea I am, of this. I am I'm the star and I'm the writer and then Adam Rifkin's everything else yep so how did you come up with this idea uh, I was really interested in the kind of intimacy that you get listening to a uh, director's commentary, how that could be um, subverted. Uh, I'm very interested in literature and the idea of the unreliable narrator, and I want to do the ultimate unreliable narrator. That is really cool, but where, do you know, if you tell anybody where they can pick up this movie or see this movie? Uh, it's video on demand, it's showing up all places, but it'll be director's cut, but put my name in it because director's cut doesn't narrow it down. There's a lot of those. Yeah, Jim Mag type in his name would do that. But I just gotta say, over the years, I've been a big fan of your magic shows. And of course, the TV show Bullshit, which they censored on the covers. I don't know why they did so that. Only some, only some. Some, but not all. Nope. But I just gotta say, thank you so much for taking thank the time. You, thanks so much. Make sure you guys support the movie. Be well. Thanks. I'll take one later. No, you can hop in after this guy. No. Yeah. I'm still over here at the director's cut uh, premiere. I was, yeah. yeah. Whoa. I'm with Teller. What's up? What are you doing here? I'm in the movie for Cry Eye. Wait, wait, you talk? No, never. I didn't know that. But uh, what, what did you actually uh, do in this film? What is your, your part? Uh, my, my, my role is of a, um, a pervert, actually. Uh, you can see from his face that it's perfectly suited to me. But people say the same thing to me online, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. maybe maybe you mean you could be brothers. Maybe we, we could be. We don't seem to share very many genetic characteristics. No. But the, I, my, my, the, the role that I play is of a person who so loves to be interrogated by the police that he hangs around crime scenes and implicates himself just so that he can have the, well, erotic pleasure of being interrogated. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Yeah. You've been in other TV shows and movies like Bullshit and different things, but is, it, is there anything else you've been working on that you can let us know about? I, well, I was on The Big Bang Theory last night as, as Amy's father, and uh, right now in Chicago, I, my production Macbeth is running into the end of June. Right, and you have any social media you like to point out to? It looks like I'm at, I'm at Mr. Teller. At the Twitter. That's about all I do. All right, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, sir. I've been a big fan of yours for years. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, now in the movie theater, the film is about to start. People are being filed in over here. And you know how cool that is that Penn and Teller are both here? Uh, we are officially putting out Director's Cut. This is the LA premiere, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to say that all of you can see this on VOD May 29th. And we are finalizing a kick-ass Blu-ray Blu DVD package for June 5th. Nice. Uh, and so you're in for some weird shit tonight. Uh, first of all, Holy shit. <laughs> uh, you have never seen a movie like that before. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's bring up the lunatics behind this movie. Uh, Mr. Pendulette and Adam Rifkin have the greatest actress of all time, Missy Pyle. <laughs> Alright, so, why don't you guys tell me how the hell this all happened. I, I, you start about the script, and I want to know how you knew you could pull this off. Because I can't imagine reading this script and saying, yeah, I can do that. So, let's start with you. How did this happen? I wanted to write a movie that uh, I got to do a lot of voiceover. And I'm really interested <laughs> in, uh, in literature. I'm interested in the unreliable narrator. I was fascinated by the idea that when you're watching a director's commentary, with that voice, that closed mic voice, the inverse square law, that you trust that person. I was very interested in, um, in what if that trust was uh, misplaced? What if the person was lying to you? What if they're really a bad person? And uh, I think I'm really interested in the fact that technology changed enough that uh, you could steal a whole movie. Uh, that wasn't possible just uh, 15, 20 years ago, but now everything's digital, one password can give you that information. And I get really interested in that, and then Rich Nathanson is somewhere here, told me that you couldn't, you couldn't write that, 
So as a fuck me to Rich Nathanson, I wrote it. And, uh, and then I, uh, I, uh, we pitched it with Pete Golden, um, I produced one of the producers on this, one of the three of us, and, um, and my manager. We pitched it around to a lot of TV studio, uh, movie studios who didn't want it. And I just sat on it for a while and thought it would never be made. And then uh, once again, Rich Nathanson told me to see a movie called Look by Adam Rifkin. And uh, yeah. I'd already been told. Yeah. My, dear friend, my dear friend Ron Jeremy had come backstage in Vegas and said, you know, there's this great movie right, called Ron. Look, and I'm in it, and it's playing tonight. You should come see it. I had nothing else to do because Ron Jeremy recommended it. I did not go. <laughs> when I watched it in, my, uh, in the privacy of my home with my friends, Look became, and still is, my favorite movie of the 21st century. And I tried to get in touch with my managers and agents to try to find Adam Rifkin. And before they got back to me, I found him on Facebook. And I wrote him a uh, note on Facebook and said uh, that Friday night that I was madly in love with him. And uh, all of a sudden, the idea of doing this impossible movie seemed possible. So I called Adam Rifkin and gave him the script. Yay. So uh, I got the Facebook message at about midnight on Friday night. Um, and uh, I don't have a life, so I was home uh, looking at Facebook at midnight on Friday night. And apparently Penn didn't have much of a life that Friday night because he had written me the Facebook message that night. And so uh, he said something nice about Look and he gave me his phone number and he said he wanted to talk to me about it. And since it was late on Friday night, I wrote him back and I said, um, here's my phone number, call me anytime over the weekend, we can talk anytime. And, and about a second after I pressed send, my phone rang. <laughs> and uh, we talked about Look a little bit, but then he said, you know, I've got this script that I, I wrote, and after seeing Look, I think you should direct it. And would you read it? And I said, I would be happy to read it. He told me a little about it. It sounded very unusual. First of all, I thought, how could I say no to something this unusual? It's such a rare opportunity to get to do something like this. So I said, I'd love to do it. Um, it would give me an opportunity as a director to do t two movies in one. I get to do a, a B thriller, an earnest B thriller, and this amateur, do-it-yourself, wacko fan movie, and somehow figure out a way to combine them together. And I said, uh, I'm in. All right, Penn, any final words for the audience? Uh, thank you. You know, this movie uh, would not have been made by a studio. This movie would not uh, exist. And uh, we, uh, with, with, with Emily uh, helping you all and making it all go, you all, uh, you all came through. And this movie's just for you, you know? And uh, you, they make Black Panther, you know, for the lowest common denominator. And no matter how great that movie is, it's made for everybody. And this movie was uh, just made for you, and thank you. Alright guys, the movie's now over and I'm with now the star, Missy Pyle. How are you doing tonight? I'm great, how are you? Pretty good. How did you get involved with this film? Like, did you know Adam before? I did not. Um, I just... I don't remember. I just got a call saying like, hey, do you want to read this? Do you want to... I read the movie and do you want to be the director? And I really read it and I thought it was... Uh, insane, and I, I, I immediately wanted to do it. Is that was so just the the crazy script is what made you want to, you know, be a part of this whole. Just the idea that it was a, a movie within a movie, and you know, it was about this woman, you know, this guy's a star, this woman, and I just I don't know, just to, when I when I um, read it, I I can usually if, if, if I can imagine it, then I like I want to do it. Sometimes it's hard to, but just there's something about it. That like it was ridiculous and would be very challenging and fun Yeah. Thank you for so much for taking the time. Of course. Do you have any social media out there you'd like to plug? Uh, oh, what, what are my social media? Yeah. Missy Pyle, M-I-S-S-I-P-Y-L-E on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you check, check her out, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's so nice it. to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, guys. So that's the premiere right now with good old Uncle Ronnie right now. We're married. And, yeah, and the first question I was going to ask is like, is that you're his new wife? We're the Rosenblum twins. A new wife of Ron Jeremy, yes. Oh, okay. You got right. twins, finally. So how, Jewish how many, twins. How many times have you been married, Ronnie? Because like if these are if these ladies are with you, 
never. I just, I'm joking. We're just joking around. Yeah, no, I know. We're just messing around. I don't want your public to think the wrong thing. No, no. no I should, no, be, no. I should yes. be this lucky. Yeah. yeah. My wife, before my you wife die, would probably... You might as well get married to a nice Jewish woman. Right. Kid. Otherwise, my wife would probably resemble 10 pounds of ground chuck. Yeah. Uh, so, what did you think about the film, Ronnie? It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. So, what have you been working on, Uncle Ronnie? Oh, what do you... Oh, I want to be working on that. Is, is that going to be another future wife? Or future uh, ex-wife? They're all over the place. Now I'm with the director extraordinaire, Adam Rifkin. That movie was insane. It's definitely nothing like the last movie star that came out, you know, a few months ago. And it's true. This is just some mind-blowing insanity, sir. Well, I take that as a compliment, so thank you. Yeah. So, like, out of all the movies you've done, where do you think you place this one as, as out of craziness factor? I would say this is pretty much the most unique film I've ever made, and I, and I think I've made some unique films. But the reason it's so unique is because of this person right here. This person wrote, this person wrote it, which is why it's so unique. I don't even know where my mind is right now after watching it, to be honest. Well, I take that as a good sign. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy, wacky, and out there. And if you guys like his movies. And you like, you know, Penn you know, Pen and Teller? You guys will dig this one right here. Please check it out. When does it come out again? On Blu-ray and stuff? It's the end of this month. Uh, I think we have the 25th of this month. Yeah, all, all the info for Amazon and stuff like okay. that will be in the description box of this video. But, like, that was crazy. And I appreciate you inviting me over here, sir. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it, man. Thanks, I appreciate man. it. Thanks. Bow. <laughs> and check this out, guys. Uncle Ronnie already has a new wife. This, You know, this is, like, wife number three right here. What, what? Be a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uncle Ronnie gets him. Yeah, Uncle Ronnie gets him everywhere. Well, guys, that was insane. Just got out of the premiere. That movie, like I said, with Adam was insane and over the top. I, I, I don't even know what I just witnessed watching that. To be honest, you know what I mean. Like I said, it's completely different from some of his other films, especially the last movie star. It's. It, 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 it's definitely definitely an experience, but I had a very fun experience right there meeting Penn and Teller magi you know, ma ma Magician legends and everything like that even D Schneider uh, happened to be in attendance I got a quick little semi blurry picture with him, but he was there But yeah, man Adam Rifkin is one of the coolest uh, writer directors out there uh, I'll have all the information for this film in the description box of this video if you guys want to check it out when it hits VOD DVD and blu-ray and things The strange things you see in Hollywood when you're just roaming around you see a bunch of people pedaling a bike together down the streets and they're high also. Well, guys, before I forget, make sure you guys, you know, uh, follow me on social media links. All, all of them will be down below to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, I started a tea Public store. I have a couple of shirt designs on there that me and my friend, Michael Ray Bauer, uh, came up with. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be adding more uh, to that tea Public store in the coming weeks and things. But if you guys want to support my channel uh, in any way, pick up a t-shirt with my face on it I guess you know if you guys want to get a t-shirt that says the cringe king and stuff like that we have one uh, up on there but thank you guys so much for watching I had an amazing fun time uh, at this movie premiere it's just, it's just you know really kind of uh, you know it's just fun you know what I mean like meeting people and hanging out with people that you grew up watching and loving you know what I mean how you know how cool that is but uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching give this video a thumbs up and hopefully I don't get lost in this jungle bye bye